In today's episode, you can absolutely wait to speak to the owner, Long. Want a curry? You got it. Boss says I don't know anything yet so I do the absolute bare minimum. So let's get started. You can absolutely wait to speak to the owner, Long. Just found this sub and wanted to share my story for more than 20 years. I was attending grad school at the time to finish my doctoral degree, which I'm only mentioning as relevant BC the customer made a crack about intelligence, while working at my father's business, an auto salvage yard. Our yard was located in New Jersey and this event occurred in August, so it was hot and very humid. I was generally very dirty when I was at work with grease and grime all over my arms and clothes. If you washed your hands and arms every time they looked dirty, your skin would just get dry and irritated so with the exception of stopping to eat, I was absolutely filthy all day long. Our yard mostly dealt with shops and small independent mechanics who came in looking just as dirty as I was so it was completely normal. Another point relevant to this story is this, I look absolutely nothing like my father. He is 5 feet 8 inches and weighs at most 140 pounds, and I am 6 feet 2 inches, and back then I was power lifting and weighed right around 220 pounds. So here's my story. A guy comes in to pick up something he bought when I was not there that had to be taken out of a car. I don't even remember what it was now, but it was something fairly heavy for him, not for me and dirty. If we had parts in our warehouse, they'd get scrubbed and cleaned, by me, before being labeled and cataloged, but parts coming right off a car just had the loose grime knocked off. So, the guy comes in looking very out of place for our yard wearing a button-down shirt, khakis and dress shoes. He hands me his receipt, and I tell him I'll bring it out the side door. I walk out with his item on a hand truck, and the only vehicle I see parked is an Acura sedan, very unlike the beat-up shop vehicles most of our customers drove. The guy is walking around the front of his car talking on his phone, but the trunk is open so I bring the hand truck around and leave his item on the ground with a piece of cardboard to keep his trunk clean and go back inside. A few minutes later the customer comes inside wanting to know what he is supposed to do with the part to which I facetiously reply install it, I imagine. He wants to know why the part is dirty. I reply it's used. He wants to know how he is supposed to get it home. I reply in your car. He wants to know why I didn't put the item in his trunk, and I point to the sign behind him, which admittedly is partially obscured by the open door, which says that we are not responsible for loading parts due to liability for possible damage to the customer's vehicle. He turns around looking pissed and shouts what am I supposed to do now, genius? Because I must be dumb if I'm dirty, right? There are now two other customers by the office, and I know them both well so I tell them I'll be right with them and walk around outside to the guy's car because I just want him gone. I throw a blanket over the rear bumper of his car, remind him that I'm not liable for damage, and I lift the piece up and gently put in on the cardboard in his car. To do this without damaging anything, I had to put one of my hands on the side of the trunk and I left a huge greasy handprint, largely on purpose. While I'm loading he is standing so close to me supervising that my arm bumps his arm and his sleeve gets dirty. The entire time this exchange has been going on, he has been on his phone and he is now ranting into his phone about our interaction and he calls me genius again and I reply, you came to a salvage yard to pick up a heavy, dirty used part in dress clothes with a luxury car. Who's the genius? At that point, he also noticed the grease on his car and his dirty sleeve and he wants to know if the owner is here and I tell him Bob is working out in the yard. He demands to speak to him, and I say fine. We walk back around to the office, and I point to Bob who is way out in the yard on the forklift moving cars that are going to the crusher. This is time sensitive because the truck will come to pick them up and block the entire street while we load so we have to be ready. He starts to walk into the yard and I try to stop him and tell him it is too dangerous. He keeps walking so I point out that our Doberman is trotting along behind the forklift. She was actually our dog from home and very friendly, but we brought her with us every day because we couldn't get home to let her out. He sees the dog and stops and I tell the guy he has to wait until Bob is finished moving vehicles 
and it will be a while which he says is fine because he is going to tell Bob exactly how his customers are being treated. Over the next 40 minutes, I walk past the guy multiple times helping customers and each time I pass him, he mutters something about me being fired and me being sorry. Finally, the forklift shuts down and Bob stands up and my new friend seems ecstatic, banging on the counter and telling me that Bob is done and he wants to speak to him immediately. I walk outside with my new friend right next to me, climb up on a car's fender and wave my arms to get Bob's attention and scream hey dad, this guy wants to talk to you. And with that my new buddy says f asterisk CKU turns and walks out, hops in his car and guns it up the street. Want a curry? You got it. Years ago, I worked for a horrible boss. He would do things like ask me to rewrite my handwritten notes because he could not read my handwriting and then chuck the newly written piece of paper straight in the bin. I forgot my ID badge once and he told me I would have to pay 50 pounds if I've lost it. I spoke to the guy who dealt with ID badges and he told me that my boss was wrong and that he would print one for free and it's not a big deal. I hadn't lost it, but I think my boss was trying to scam me out of money because he insisted on a cash payment. Other times he would forget to specify certain things and then blame me for not using my brain. For example, he would instruct me to contact everyone on this list who was in debt and then berate me for contacting someone and informing them that they were in debt of dash pound 0.50 because it made him look stupid, the messages were signed in his name, not mine. He often asked me to get him lunch on my break, and then without asking me first if it was okay, he would call all of the other staff members and ask them if they want anything brought in for lunch and then instruct me to bring their items in too. One day he wrote me a list of numerous people's orders, including his. I had to make two trips because I needed to get so much food and I couldn't carry it all at once. When I got back to the office the first time, he asked for his food, and I told him that I was going back out to get it because I couldn't carry it all. He had a go at me about wasting time, reminded me that I only had X amount of time for my lunch break left, and told me next time, get all the food in one go. Back at the cafe for the second time in 20 minutes, I ordered his usual curry, which he always ate with rice. When the chef asked me, just curry or curry and rice? I was about to reply curry and rice when I looked down at the paper that my boss had wrote and given to me. He usually wrote curry and rice, but this time he had just written curry. Q malicious compliance. Just curry, please I said with a smile. When I got back and gave my boss his food, he didn't talk to me for hours. He would constantly call the receptionist with things like, can you tell only underscore kangaroo to do X, Y and Z despite the fact that our desks were two meters apart and I was in earshot. He fired me shortly after when I called in sick with a migraine due to me grinding my teeth at night due to the stress of the job. He told me that he is no longer accepting that as a sick day excuse and told me that if I don't go into work, I am fired with immediate effect, meaning that I won't be required to work two weeks notice. I didn't go in and I'm in a much better job now. I've also stopped grinding my teeth. Boss says I don't know anything yet so I do the absolute bare minimum. Some background. I started my first, full-time, office job at a corporate America hell hole a week after college. It was an industry I hadn't worked in before and I needed to be licensed. The company that hired me, we'll call them Smith Incorporated, paid for my licensing fees, study materials, classes, etc. for me to become licensed. The total cost was about $500. It was a sweet deal. They gave me approximately 90 days, paid, to study a textbook and pass an online course. I didn't have to do any work for the company, simply study and pass the licensing exam. It was pretty easy and I passed on my first try. My boss, let's call her Mary, was super excited that I passed, and I began training under an associate-level co-worker who had just been promoted from the position I was in. The co-worker, Jen, was super great and helpful. She began training me on two simple tasks that I could do. The only rule was if the client had a question specifically about their contract, I would ask Jen or forward it to my team lead. 
Well, I ended up getting an email from a client about their contract, and I video called Jen to ask how to handle. She walked me through it as I shared my screen with her. I wrote the email back to the client exactly how she told me, and she read the email before sending. A month goes by and everything is great. I'm learning and getting more comfortable. Then I get a really nasty email from Mary. She cc's my whole team into the email going on and on about how I cannot answer contract questions, and how she's gone over this with me before she hadn't, Jen was the one who told me I can't answer contract questions. Both Jen and I try to explain what happened and that Jen was the one who wrote the email, I just typed what Jen said and sent it from my email since the client emailed me and not Jen. Mary then calls the team up in a video call and goes on about how I don't know anything, and I just started, and I really don't know how this industry works, and that answering contract questions is out of my job description. It went on for about 5 minutes. I say okay, and get off the call crying. The next day out of pure pettiness I simply do the absolute bare minimum. I don't know anything, right, Mary? I still complete all my tasks and everything that's required of me. Anything more advanced that I would normally try to learn with Jen's help? Nope. I just forwarded it to our team lead and said sorry, Mary said I can't do anything outside of my job description. Work was much less stressful after I decided to listen to Mary and what many others told me before, don't do anything outside of your job description. Also. Mary later fired me for being a whistleblower when I reported the company to the health authority for violating COVID protocols. I sleep better at night knowing how much money Mary wasted on training me. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.